Welcome back. Today I just wanted to talk about uh, one thing that I feel really strongly about when it comes to JavaScript code, front end and back end, and that is you have to lint your JavaScript. You have to lint. Have to. And linting is uh, a word that means, if you don't know, uh, to basically do a static analysis on your JavaScript and define rules that the static analysis will be able to catch and warn you. Uh, one ones that I helped me the most is uh, finding unused variables and not only helps you clean out the code dropping things uh, that are you know shouldn't be there it also warns you if you mis mistype variable name and it's a huge help unused variables and no undeclared uh, no undefined variables uh, it will really really catch a lot of little bugs uh, I mean, there's a lot of ton of uh, rules you can configure um, there is uh, best practices. For example, the one I like to use uh, is uh, Airbnb uh, Linton guide. Um, you can Google it, it's easy to find. Uh, but yeah, there's best practices. Uh, a little bit about the linting uh, software available. Uh, number one, the first one was JS Lint, uh, uh, written by Crackford, I believe, the guy who wrote uh, JavaScript the good parts. Uh, this uh, older gentleman now uh, who was at Yahoo it was he really I, I myself and a lot of people credit him for basically making JavaScript cool uh, and explaining how you can do cool things with it and uh, he was kind of like at the forefront of this JavaScript revolution and you know that you see today where JavaScript is basically everywhere uh, uh, but uh, there was a fork not fork but a different version that I don't even, actually never used JS Lint uh, so I don't know what the problems was that was, but I used the, the next popular one, which was called JS Hint. Um, and it was pretty cool, it was configurable. Uh, a lot of people still use it till this day. It's a, go a cool project uh, for basic setup. Uh, but uh, the following project that I per personally currently use, I recommend is called ES Lint, um, uh, like ECMAScript uh, Lint. And um, I forget the gentleman's name right now, uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but he was started, uh, I'll link, I'll add it to the comment, my apologies. Uh, but uh, it was started as a more customizable JS hint. So in JS hint, it's kind of like, it is what you get versus ES lint. It comes with default rules, but you can also write your own rules and extend it further. And it's actually pretty cool, a good practice to, if you catch a bug, that could have been caught by setting analysis tool. Just write it on, you know, ESLint plugin, hook it in, and then, you know, on big production code, you're not gonna have that problem again for all your developers. So ESLint is really good. It's a little bit slower JS hint, but highly recommend it. And one last tip is ESLint documentation is actually amazing. I would highly recommend any junior JavaScript developer to, uh, you know, go look at their documentation, you know, pull up like their recommended lint rules or uh, like I mentioned Airbnb guide uh, for linting and uh, read through every rule understand why it's there why it should be there why it shouldn't be there really think it through for your code to arrive in this rules a set of rules that you would want to use but even the rules they don't don't use it will probably be a good uh, experience to read through that code I really like it it's really 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 well documented project so anyway uh, definitely whichever tool you use there may be other now that I'm not familiar with, but uh, you have to link your code. It just it just takes very little to set up and just catches bugs left and right. People mistype stuff all the time, forget stuff. People, you know, people are people. They make mistakes. So, yeah, link your code. Definitely link your code. Highly recommend it.